I will bless you abundantly and make your descendants as countless as the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore. Today we hear the story of Abraham's willingness to sacrifice his son Isaac. Now, to our modern ears, this story is disturbing. On its face, God asks Abraham to engage in child sacrifice. This is not exactly a comforting thought. Many scholars think, however, that this passage may in fact be a protest or criticism against the practice of child sacrifice. That at various times, other nations around Israel engaged in. After all, God also commands Abraham to not go through with the sacrifice of his son. The point would then be to show that Israel is different, and Israel's God is different than the bloodthirsty deities worshipped elsewhere. But if we look a little deeper into the text, we see something else, something interesting about Abraham's faith here which is commended in the text. Now, first, there's the imagery or the typology pointing to God the Father and Christ. As we see, God the Father does give up his only son for the salvation of the world. So the devotion of Abraham prefigures the love of God the Father seen in the Paschal mystery. Now, secondly and relatedly, As we've just mentioned, the son that Abraham is willing to sacrifice is his only son. Now, this is not just a detail to appeal to sentiment. This detail is perhaps the essential point of the story. Our verse today contains an appeal to Genesis 15, 5, where God promises Abram, Abraham's name at the time, to make his descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky. As the narrative goes, remember, God has already made this promise to Abraham. So what is Isaac then? Not just his beloved son, but the only means by which God's covenantal promise, already given, can be fulfilled. In other words, Abraham's faith here is so profound that he is willing to part with not just a dearly loved one, but everything that God has promised and already given to him out of his devotional obedience to God. Now, as we mentioned, the story ends up showing that this kind of cruel sacrifice is not ultimately what God requires or wants. But looking at this story and what we often refer to as the test of Abraham's faith, we see that what's being tested or measured is not Abraham's willingness to engage in a barbaric practice, but whether his devotion to God is true and entire or simply transactional or based on the gifts that God has given him. God is essentially asking Abraham whether he loves him for who he is rather than because he has given him something. With this in mind, hopefully this helps get us a little beyond the shock of God's request in the story, and even out of the realm of violence altogether, and into the deeper message about faith as a form of devotion that goes beyond bargaining and rewards. The story should be a challenge for us to go deeper in our own faith, After all, we're offered salvation because of God's love for us. But we have to always remember that true faith is a relationship of love, not simply a means to an end.